Thanks, Tamsin. Hello, everyone. Can my wife hear me? Yeah, good. Um, I think it's thank you. I'm not sure that that the project is... I think there's a few ambushes with this project because I think that the city, the family and small mini projects, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a conflict that throws up some, some curly questions. Anyway, so things like, I, I mean, I, I haven't got any kids, so what's a family do, doing in the city? And I also think that there's a whole industry now about housing in the city that Rob Adams was, op who opened the thing the other night, who's, who's into through um, Yarn Girl. And uh, ha um, so that's cool. And, and cities almost like compete now on a, re on a, on a global scale with each other. So what's it left? That leaves us with small stuff. And you know, what is, what is small? Why do, why do we need to build small? I have a real problem with it. I've never had a client in 33 years come in and say, David, can you build me a small house? So where's it come from? Is it a religious thing? Is it like uh, modesty? Is it good to be small and uh, you know, sensitive and, and all that Christian stuff. Uh, yeah, you could blame the royals, right? The royals, what do they do? The royal family live in massive v v palaces. Uh, they have too many children, three at last count, for the, for the last generation. And, and you know, people, people seem to think that that's the end point. If, if you've got money, you've got to build big. And I don't think architects have addressed that very well. And I think that we need tools to do that. And I think I'm going to get into it, but I think we need to use, we need to, our ideas need to be better ideas. They need to be ideas about that address big issues like climate change, like overpopulation, like species extinction. So not small ideas. We need big ideas. Um, it would be good even if we had a symposium to find an ethical or a moral standard that we can agree on, um, on how we act, as architects we band together and um, use our cultural power, because that's what we have. That's why sponsorship um, starts to gel around these sorts of events, um, to, to create an aesthetic language that addresses head on the community's values that big is good. Anyway, into the scheme. The I uh, that's what we're here to talk about, right? I used to compress all the amenities. So I thought outside in the suburbs, um, your typical um, three-bedroom house. Uh, uh, the idea here was to actually bring that to the site and just stack it up on itself. Uh, I work with developers, and they're pretty. They're sticklers for room sizes, right? Bedrooms, three meters by three point three meters. Bigger bedrooms, three point six by three meters. Bathrooms, minimum one point six meters wide. You know, everybody knows the the garage regulations. I find a bit of comfort in this, but I think it's important that anything we do has a connection to some sort of realism. Um, so you've got that working from the inside. You've got your planning working from the inside. From the outside, you've got planning regulations. Victorians all know res code. So res code's chipping at the edges of the things. So our model is about the, um, those, those standard rooms filling the inside and the, and the res code bearing down on the outside and cutting areas out of it. Um, what we're left with is a wall. Right, well, 100 millimeter wide wall. I'm struggling with this microphone. <laughs> I'm going to eat it in a minute. 100 millimeter wide wall. It's expanse. Sometimes you can argue with the developer, say, okay, it's 100 mil. We need that minimum. So you say, right, oh, right, oh, right. We've expended it to 600 millimeters. So that's that's it. That's the that's the length. That's the width of the architecture. But within that facade, we've stacked 15 tons of topsoil. I'll get on get onto that in a minute. Topsoil, interesting idea. When we left the opening the other night, the Melbourne Festival was starting down the road. They'd shipped in trucks and trucks of sand that the Indigenous community were doing their opening ceremony on. In, see, I reckon earth is underrated and maybe it's a contested field. And I think I'm going to lose everyone here, but you could do a post-colonial study on earth and Australian culture and its, its meaning for us. And it might be a way that us white folk connect to the original owners of the land, anyway. right? so let's get back to the program. 15 tonnes of top cell used in the facade. Healthy soil, what a great idea. You could use it from road widening or construction around the outer area, wherever. Um, top soil, as we know, allows foods, foods to grow and it also provides the gas, the oxygen of the air that we breathe. So here's an idea, what about 
um, using the idea of plot ratio. Manhattan, plot ratio. Area of the site relates to the height of the building. What about using a plot ratio of 60 square metres and say, hang on, Mr Developer or Builder or Family Homeowner, you need 60 square metres of topsoil on your property, right? It's, I'm, all I'm, I'm kind of suggesting that as a group we have power in regulation. Um, anyway, I'll get on to that. Um, so th those 15 tonnes of soil could potentially support 240 plants. And, and the plants could um, the plants would look after themselves, a bit like this stuff. It, it, the, it's a bit like Australian bushland. It's not manicured privet hedges and things, box hedges. It's just the, the, the areas are best if they're left alone. Gather leaf litter, logs, twigs, habitat development over time. They're not dead walls, um, but real vertical gardens with living soil. Um, this is a sister project to a project that we completed in, in North Fitzroy where the planters were actually applied to the outside structure of the building. This time the planters are actually embedded in the structure of the building. They actually provide the thermal mass around the building. Um, now the, the above the planters is clear glass with sliding panels to get access to all the, to maintain, maintain the vegetation. Um, and someone the other night was worried about the windows looking down here. So the, the grass gets trimmed to, get the, the, to let the sun shine in in winter. It's let grown if you want to have privacy. Um, these things were trimmed the other night because we couldn't see the couldn't see the board. So I kind of like that kind of interactive vegetation thing. So the architecture space is not about shrouding or privacy, but it's open and transparent. I kind of like the idea of an open and tra transparent community, uh, open transparent society. It's got big tree tubs for big canopy trees, but the whole house itself, when it's actually working, is a giant tree canopy. Um, Establishing an ecosystem for the birds, the butterflies, the bugs, down to the soil microbes. So living walls actually invert dead concrete walls and dead plasterboard walls. So getting back to regulations, building the building industry evaluates the R value of insulation. We're all familiar, familiar with that as practitioners. The uh, S value of windows. So why not an environmental rating for new buildings? An E rating, right? Um, and that, that could be expanded to, to multiple housing. Um, so instead of naming the new apartment block Stonington or Eve or Voltaire, you could actually, in, in this new world, um, you could actually name the apartment blocks Caprosma or uh, She Oak or wait for it, Tomato. You know, these things, these things could actually be growing, right? So apartment blocks um, could have body corporates, and the body corporates in these buildings, when, when the grass house expands into a multi-housing thing, the body crockets could be like football teams. They could compete with each other for the healthiest building awards and, you know, the biggest pumpkin and all that silliness. So why planting? Right, I'm an architect. What a cop-out. Planting. Let's talk about space. Let's stop, stop talking about green stuff. Nah. Children love gardens. Parents, as you get older, you think, I'm going to die. So you look at plants as they come and grow and they die. It's reassuring. To, to sort of foster things and, and nurture things. They signify the path from life to death. When Rob was opening this thing in it the other night, a bird flew in and, and is living in the, the pipe opening in one of the concrete beams. So even, even nature is telling us something, that, that, that this shithole that's here, right? They're still trying to come back and take over the space. And Australia is well known internationally for its flora and fauna. And by the way, Half the world's animal population has um, deceased over the last 40 years. And also the state of Victoria used to be known as the Garden State. So, what, so to wrap up, what I'm trying to say is, why can't we develop an ideological architecture? I'm an old modernist. I like that when we all, as architects, get together and we work on something big, right? Why can't we agree? I went to an American conference a few years ago and they all said they're, they're promoting collaboration between architects and builders and builders and developers and scientists and things. As a profession, why can't we get like, like a modernist symposium and get together and work out a, an environmental aesthetic value that we're all sort of compete about, instead of competing about jobs or trying to create our own little practices? Right, anyway, maybe it's a, dis a, a, a spatial di display of a, a set of, con a, of, of how to construct nature because that's what architects' powers is, you know, we can create beauty. In this new, in, in this new world, 
we could agree to combine m to make investigations into the spatial expression of indigenous ecologies. Anyway, I'm wrapping up. <laughs> Cathedrals and temples often have parables built into their walls. It's called catechism. It's the way that people were instructed on, ha on moral lessons when there were no books, right? Modern day parables might instruct us on our relationship to the natural world. Stick your head in the model and look at the windows. Now the windows are like stained glass. The windows filled with changing light, growth, and the space of possibilities. Thanks very much.